Okay, having been menaced by speedboats from top to bottom of the river, <laughs> I'm finally in one. I've met Roger Knight near Barham. Rog, you're a local champion fisherman. What are we going to do now, mate? I'm a local fisherman anyway. <laughs> We're going to go fishing and uh, you never know, we might catch an iconic Murray cod. Magic. So, there we have it. Back on the Murray, no hands. Let's catch some cod. We definitely got something. Oh, we've got a fish here, Dave. All right. Slowly reel them in. Yes. It's a little bit like old man in the sea now. <laughs> Does it feel like there's much weight on it? Or a little tacker? He feels fairly small. Although, what do I know? Although, hold on, he's got a little bit of strength. Bit of a kick, getting closer to the boat. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got the rod tip moving there. Oh yeah. What do you reckon we've got here, mate? Silver perch, I reckon. Well, it could be a little Murray cod. Yes, we've got our first Murray cod. What did cod. that take us, Dave? How long? That took about, that took about <laughs> 50 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about all. We throw the, throw the line out and... And what did it take? Less than a minute. <laughs> Here we go. Congratulations. High five, your first Murray Cod. <laughs> okay, so you're releasing him because we're not allowed to uh, catch Murray, see, Murray Cod at the Murray moment. Murray Cod's out of season at the moment at 35. So I've got to be 60 centimetres in length. And obviously uh, pretty keen to get away. <laughs> <laughs> they come close to the bank and they're looking for um, larger specimens and insects. Um, you know, little uh, marsupials swimming around the edge of the bank, um, little ducks, or even large ducks, um, little snakes. Um, and there have been some declarations in the press by wildlife groups recently that Murray Cod is on the verge of becoming endangered. We were out there, cast the lines in, 50 seconds later a Murray Cod bites. Another two minutes later another one. It's shoulder shruggingly frustrating for people actually based on the river to be told what's going on by people who don't even know where Barron is. And the last hundred kilometres or so of river have been has been a stretch I've really been able to engage with. Even though it's been a weekend, it's very reefy here, lots of snags, so there haven't been any boats out apart from the occasional fishermen. Last night I was lucky enough to stay with Faye and Ken O'Brien, who run a local sawmill. Now this area, or well, this stretch of river has been bordered on both sides, on the left by the Gumbara State Forest, and on the right by the Kundruk Paracuta Forest. All massively populated with red gums, and it all links into the topical issues of drought and water management and environmental flow. See the rings on the trees, we've left all the healthy straight dominant trees. So, oh well, there you go. So there's one side of the road. That's what it basically looked like. See how they're all dead and dying in there? Very close together. Yeah, very close and together. Really Whereas here we've got the spacings right. That's what that area looked like. So we've come through and spaced it. And now you watch the tops of these trees when we look at tops. Look, look through there. And this, this will lead us back to the road. And look at all those. There's just far too many trees in here to support for the availability of water. Those red gums are really, really sick, you know. Um, they're on their last legs. And they're trees that have probably been here for 50 to 100 years. So in turn, uh, they're, they're finding it. This is the hardest they've ever had it, as far as moisture goes. They haven't got a disease or anything like that. They just simply know enough water for everybody. There seems to be such a difference in knowledge and policies. The ways of implementing what needs to happen. What the different languages are being used. From an outsider's point of view, I'm not directly affected by this river. I'm not directly affected by the decisions made in the state capital. But I can see that it's blindingly obvious that decisions have been made in the past that have just been outlandishly wrong and have affected livelihoods to such a degree that now when important 
water transport needs to be implemented. There's not just differences of opinion and experience, but there's also bitterness that's been brought up by past decisions. And it's also dangerous because whatever people say and whatever people do, <laughs> something's funny. <laughs> but whatever decisions are being taken, they're being taken to win votes on the whole. And then four years later, someone else comes in who also needs the votes. And all the while, the Murray continues in its way. 